Hi everyone, Trina here, and this is 5.8 Origins of Soul. And where we left off was we were talking about the different principles of the divine masculine and the divine feminine, and how they are interlinked uh, without fail, that there is not one without the other in this reality and in this construct. So within that polarity, we um, are expressed as a wholeness. And we were getting ready to go into a different um, aspect of how God has been seen for thousands of years. And it was interesting where we left off, they were talking about um, Regal and Ariel, the Eagle and the Dove, the Divine Masculine and the Divine Feminine. And then in Taoism and in Egypt, um, they all have different aspects of the same principle. And um, Taoism, it's yin and yang, the path of union that expresses itself as two genders, the poles, the planets, the atoms, the batteries, everything that's woven, woven into the fabric of the universe itself, because without these two complementary energies, known as Isis and Osiris, said to, from the Egypt, uh, said to have been created long before they came to earth, as the eternal sister and brother, the wife and husband, the two halves of the single whole. They are the divine twins. They are both separate and joined as long as the universe is in form. Jesus spoke of them as the Abba, Amma, the God behind creation itself. So then next it gets into the dot within the circle. Behind these two powerful energies is the one primordial presence that is source, the supreme creator that has been called by many different names, Atam, Sagma, Brahma, Sagmad, yod Vadhet, Allah, Logos, and the infinite, to name a very few. But whatever use we name, whatever name we use, I said that backwards, is it's divine intelligence and it is the source of all things. Its consciousness seems to bring from nothingness and it manifests in countless forms, some so small and some so grand that you could never hold it in your hands or see it in the vastness of its reflection spread out against the, majest the ma majesty of the night sky. It is consciousness and ex it exists in everything, whether multiplied or divided. It surrounds us in both the visible and invisible realms. In the Hermetica, an ancient Greek Egyptian wisdom text, the purported author Thoth or Thoth asks, do you think Atum is invisible? Nothing is more visible than Atum. He created all things so that through them you could see him. It is Atum's great heart that he manifests himself in everything. The Upanishads remind us, manifest near, moving in the secret place the great abode. Herein rests all that moves, breathes, and shuts the eyes. Luminous, subtler than the subtle, in which the worlds and their denizens are fixed. That this imperishable Brahman, that deathless Brahman is before Brahman is behind Brahman, to the right, to the left, below, above, preceding all. This Brahman truly is the all. Thus, the ancients chose a symbol of a circle with a dot at the center to represent this first cause. And this is what they show.
And that is a very, very ancient symbol. It, it, it goes before words. So it is extremely old. So when the ancients chose this symbol of a circle with a dot, it represents the first cause. In later centuries, this representation became the astro astrological symbol for the sun, the giver of light and life, not only because it sits at the center of our solar system, but because nothing would exist without this light. See, this sun is the center of the solar system. In Dante's Paradiso, the third part of his Divine Comedy, the saintly Beatrice tells Dante that the heavens and all nature hang from this one eternal point, manifesting as the formless dot. The beginning of all things is a state of oneness, which many call unity. All things in the world today have one natural origin. All things began as one which came forth out of the no thing, the unmanifest, by the elongation of the dot. The Kabbalah refers to this primordial atom or supreme intelligence as the unknowable an, which is A-I-N. The an is the heart of the great mysteries, and today physicists are using this same symbol to represent the concept of singularity as well as the event horizon. These are scientific names for the one who creates the many, for they are irre irre irrevo irrevocably linked to one another. From the one comes the circle, expanse of the universe, and eventually the many will discover that this one lives within the center of their being. <coughs> Sorry. This great unborn soul is the same that abides as the intelligent soul of all living creatures, subduer of all, ruler of all, the sovereign Lord of all, the upholder of worlds so that they will not fall into ruin. Manly P. Hall reminds us, all things move and evolve as diversity in unity, realizing the fundamental unity of all forms and all life manifesting through infinite diversity, infinite time, and infinite space. The student can understand the ancient occult demanded for brotherhood. If all things are individualizing sparks from the one neutral source, then each is a brother to everything else. Man is not to coalesce with, but to cooperate with all living things. The unity buried in this diversity and hence unrecognizable by the young soul. It is seen in its true aspect as the soul reality by him who has raised his spiritual consciousness above the plane of matter. Mm -hmm. The ancient Egyptian sages referred to this creative force as Tum or Atum, the first primordial drop in the cosmic ocean that set everything into motion. This is the primordial Atum, the word that moved across the waters of the deep, creating ripples like a pebble thrown into a pond. These ripples flow out from the center in concentric waves, like a great beacon of sound, moving at tremendous speed to create the expanse of all the dimensions. 
the nine dimensions. Both Hebrew and Christian theology adopted the image below, placing God at the center of the universe in a hierarchy of ascending and descending planes. Entities closer to the center they believed are closer to the presence of God, while those on the edges are further from the light of the divine. This same principle can also be found in the microcosmic and macrocosmic layers of an onion, the rings of a tree, the orbital, the orbital planes of the atom, and the structure of our entire solar system. Thus, the masters taught that the word was brought in all things, and it brought all things into being. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And all things were made through him, and without him nothing was made. John 1, 1 through Verse 3. Many ancient wisdom teachings believed that these that there are seven of these vibrational dimensions nested inside of one another, and each plane was believed to have seven sub octaves. Other cosmological systems have claimed that there are as many as nine, ten, or even twelve dimensions. I see twelve at least, actually, more than that. But site levels of, um, they have dimensional planes with their respective sub-octaves, some vibrating at such exquisite levels of purity that they can hardly even be perceived. Throughout time, the knowledge of these inner planes has been encoded to various different symbols key among them being the seven-layered labyrinth inscribed in the floors of many ancient temples, as well as the beautiful cathedral in France. And they show pictures of the layers. So the nine dimensions nested inside one another, concentric circles, planes and vibration, and then the, the one below is the nine layers, and that is represented by the onion. And this is the representation they show for the labyrinth. The labyrinth is rep it represents the soul's journey into and out of the worlds of form. At the center of the journey sits the flower of life, leading to the activation of the sixth dimensional rainbow body of light. Only here, at the center, can we reconnect to heaven, a realm that sits at the center of the six lokas, or planets described in the Tibetan wisdom. It is a place of centeredness, where we can access the heart. It is where our angelic self resides. And it is only this connection that will free us to make the journey out of the world of duality. Very interesting. I recently just had a session and um, my client and I were working on remembering who she is and reconnecting with the true essence of what she really is. And while we were in the session, she um, went through layers, and then she got to her mother's womb. And then I suggested that she go before then. And when she went before that, she saw an angelic being of light. And then I asked her to go before that. And when she went before that, she went into light and geometry and the quantum fields. And then I said, go before that. 
and she went to the void. And then I said, go before that. And she ended up right there at the dot. So that was where she ended up going. And I thought that was profound because I've, I, I've, I actually, um, I haven't seen the dot. I've seen the angelic self, I've seen the quantum fields, and I've seen the void. But um, I've seen the spark, and that could be the same thing. Um, I think it was because, yeah, maybe because she said it was a point of light, a dot. And um, I just thought that was profound and very interesting because I literally was working with a client this weekend who saw this, and now I'm reading it to you all. So those synchronicities usually don't happen, you know, unless they're supposed to. So I thought I would share but apparently, this is like, when you get back to the, the smallest, most significant, most undivided, purest part of you, you literally are a dot, a spark of light. And that light has ultimate potential. It can become anything, and it's conscious of itself. And that's amazing. So... As we are reminded in Tibetan wisdom, the centeredness is where we access our hearts. This is where our angelic self resides. And it is only in this connection that we will become free to make the journeys outside of the world of duality. We are reminded this involution of the life of the Logos as the ensouling force in every particle and it's successive and wrapping in the spirit matter of every plane, so that the materials of each plane have within them a hidden or latent condition, all the form and force of the divine, all the possibilities of all the planes above them, as well as those of their own, these two facts make evolution certain to the very lowest particles in the hidden potentials which we will render which will render it fit as these forces become active powers to enter into the forms of the highest beings in fact evolution may be summed up in one phrase it is latent potentials within every being becoming active powers. That's beautiful and that's true from what I've seen. Unlimited potential. Your divine spark, it can be anything. It is unlimited. It's amazing how powerful it is. Creates all that we see. So the multiple, multiple dimension and string theory and parallel worlds. Theoretical physicist and futurist Michu Kaku is the co-founder and popularizer of the string field theory, which proposes that there are multiple universes and multiple dimensions beyond the one that we know. He writes about these very di various dimensions in his book, Parallel Worlds, A Journey Through Creation, Higher Dimensions, and the Future of the Cosmos. Until recently, he tells us, scientists viewed the idea of a multidimensional reality with great suspicion. But recently, the tide has changed dramatically, with the finest minds on the planet working furiously on this subject. The reason for the sudden change is the arrival of string theory and its latest version, M-theory which promises not only to unravel the nature of the multiverse, but allows us to read the mind of God. Wow. The string theory is actually a scientific description of the ancient philosophical concept of the music of the spheres. The biblical holy word or the audible life stream known in Sanskrit as Shabbata speech, sound, as in the sacred syllable, Om. 
Dr. Kaku tells us string theory and M theory are based on one simple and elegant idea that the bewildering variety of the subatomic particles making up the universe are similar to the notes that one can play on a violin string or on a membrane, membrane such as a drum head. These are not ordinary strings and membranes. They exist in 10 and 11th dimensional hyperspace. Physics have traditionally viewed these electrons as being points of particles that are infinitely small. This means that they had to introduce a different point particle for each of the hundreds of subatomic particles they found, which is very confusing. But according to string field theory, if we had a super microscope that could peer into the heart of the electron, we would see that there is no point or particle at all, but a tiny vibrating string that only appears to be a point particle because our instrument our instruments have been too crude. This tiny string in turn vibrates at, at a different frequency and resonates. If we were to pluck this vibrating string, then it would change mode and become another subatomic particle, such as a cork. Pluck it again and it turns into a neutrino. In this way, we can explain the blizzard of subatomic particles as nothing less than different musical notes of a string. We can now replace the hundreds of subatomic particles seen in the laboratory with one single object, the string. It's funny too, as I'm reading this to you, I keep seeing the golden or silver cord that is attached to us. Um, I've always seen this when people travel and when I've traveled, there's a string and we're attached to that string. So this is profound because um, they're talking about the quantum situation here being string and I see us being attached to a string. So we can now replace the hundreds of subatomic particles seen in the laboratory with a single object, the string. In this new scientific vocabulary, the laws of physics carefully constructed after thousands of years of experimentation are nothing more than the laws of harmony that one can write down for the strings and membranes. The laws of chemistry are the melodies that one can play on these strings and the universe is a symphony of strings and the mind of God that Einstein wrote so eloquently about is cosmic music resonating throughout hyperspace. Esoteric wisdom says that this divine melody is the modulating frequencies of sacred sound that set everything into motion. As we shall see these modulations are part of the functions of the seraphim, wow. who along with the other orders of angels ultimately create the templates for all the structures of the universe, informing the structures of energy as it descends into the worlds of matter. This Taurus is both the infinite symbol of the Ouroboros in the ancient symbol of the snake or the dragon biting its tail. All of these symbols were designed to depict the circular nature of the universe. That's profound. I saw the snake eating its own tail and um, the seraphim are the ones that create the, the music and that's amazing because I saw as we were created, we were created by sound, music. I literally saw that. So the seraphim were the ones actually giving forth the notes. That's a profound thing for me there. So 
So all of the snake and dragon symbology were designed to, de to depict the circular nature of our universe. Jill Purse, a British voice teacher and a family constellation therapist, writes about how this waveform pattern is created by the unformed waters of the cosmic egg, <laughs> turning in to behold itself. The same vortical spiral laws govern the movements of water, which composes nearly three quarters of our physical bodies. Water is the pure potential. This is why God keeps telling me, you want to fix the world, you will fix the water. This is making a lot of sense to me on a lot of levels. So, okay, so... The, pure, it, the water is the pure potential, the unformed matrix. This is mom. Mom is the water, the Holy Spirit. I think that's why the Creator says, all sin will be forgiven except for those who harm my Holy Spirit. So all the people dumping all this radioactive waste into our oceans, ruh row. That might be bad. But... It's our job to fix it, and it's our job to heal it. And we can do that with our hearts and our thoughts and vibration because all is a song, and songs create vibration. So, okay, so the pure potential, the unformed matrix from which all life takes its being, the cosmic sea, or the plen plenum, it is from the involution of the unformed waters that the egg crystallizes by turning in upon itself of energy, of matter, or of consciousness. And all of these are one and the same. Wow. So energy, matter, or consciousness, all of these are one and the same. This figure is the representation of what they believe might be what our universe looks like. And this is the Ouroboros, the serpent eating its own tail in the infinite loop. So those are the diagrams they show for that. So I think that's another time we should, should dive into that. Energy and matter or consciousness all are the same. That's profound. The celestial circle of heaven called the Empyrean, illustrated by Gustave Doré. And this is what they're showing for this, for the celestial circle of heaven. Okay, guys, that's where we will start but we will continue with the water part real quick and then we'll get into the eagle and the sacred ma uh, masculine on the second. So energy, matter, or consciousness, all of these are one and the same. This order, reverberating down into the microscopic and subatomic levels, both structures and reflects our consciousness. Wow. The full significance of this organization, which was obviously known to the Greeks, since their word cosmos means order. It is again being demonstrated by the physicists who say that matter actually consists in its own movement and organization. Similarly, the growth of a human consciousness is the continuous refining of its own organization. The ordering of its own individual microcosm. This means that as we evolve, we move up the spiral ladder of consciousness. In the unwinding or activation of your own DNA, this spiral movement can also be found in our sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems. The sympathetic nervous system is your normal um, nervous system that you feel pain, cold, touch, all these things. The parasympathetic 
is the part of you that makes your eyes blink, your heart beat, your blood flow, your digestive enzymes work. Um, it, it, it'll knock you unconscious if there's extreme fever. Uh, these are the parasympathetic properties of your body. So they're saying that these are found in our sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous systems acting as a stairway to heaven. William Blake, the British mystic and painter, portrays it beautifully in the image of the soul's ascent into the heavenly realms seen here, as I showed you on plate five. I've seen this. I've seen people get into the parasympathetic part of their bodies, into the part of them that makes their heart beat, their eyes blink, their hair grow. This is where they find the true power and potential of what they really are. It's in these parasympathetic, in these subconscious realms. This is where you truly do have the ability to connect to that which is really what you are before you took on a human body, and it'll be there after you let it drop. So, I will continue with the next one. Oh, sorry, very soon. This is getting about 31 minutes long. So we will see you guys on the next, and I believe um, we will pick up with the eagle and the sacred masculine. Regal, Regal, the eagle, the symbol of father, the God who sees all things. So we'll see you on the next one. Have a beautiful day. Much love to you all, and may favor and joy be with you. See you soon.